This procedure takes several days to complete, so the first step is to choose a body. The body that I'm going to use for this demonstration is the Smart Chicolina by Briar. I really like working with Briar models because the uh, logo is um, embossed and it's real easy to clean off the logo with a little bit of sandpaper. Just rub it gently. You don't want to put too much pressure on the sanding because you just want to remove the logo. You don't want to remove a lot of the paint. Okay. So once you've got the logo smoothed down, you don't have to worry about like this one has a ding. He's got a big scratch. That's going to get covered. Just kind of look for any seams, any imperfections that you want to get rid of and do your standard prep. Once you've done your prep work, just take a sponge and just kind of clean off the model totally. Get rid of any dust from the prep work. And get rid of any cobwebs etc. that might have formed since most people leave their bodies lying in boxes for a while. So while we're waiting for him to dry a little bit, you can do this method on plastic models, you can do it on artist resins, you can do it on ceramics and porcelain. The technique varies a little bit depending on the material you're working with. The one caveat I have is if you are working with something that's stable mate scale, um, you know, classic scale, something small that has very, very small ears on it. Be careful when you apply the acid for the patina. If you leave it sitting on the ears too long, you're likely to find the ear, plastic ears on the model have dissolved. I have had that happen with the very first artist resin I did. Okay, so we have our model. He's pretty much dry. What you're going to do is you're going to apply your primer. Your primer in this case can be gesso, it can be uh, acrylic, it can be anything you want. If you want to use a spray pairing Krylon in a black mat, that's fine. But you want to make sure it's black because the black really enhances the appearance of the metallic over paint that we're going to put on there. And you also want it to be matte. You know, if you've got a piece that's glossy, rough up the gloss a little bit. That way, if it shows through a little bit when you start applying your metallic overcoat, it won't reflect light. It'll just look like dull metal underneath there. If you have gloss showing through, it tends to be distracting and, and look more like you left a place blank. So what I'm going to use is just some material I got from um, Michaels or Hobby Lobby. It's just uh, folk art acrylic. I'm going to go ahead and I dilute this so that it's about the thickness of um, milk. And I'm going to pour some on a plate here. And when you're doing this, you're going to want brushes that are dedicated to this method because the metal in the next step will really chew up your brushes, so don't use a, a valuable brush for this. So I'm going to take a little bit of the black, and I'm just going to do what you would typically do with a uh, primer. The only difference being you don't really have to worry about having an absolutely smooth, uh, perfect coat of primer because the metallics that you're going to put over this will actually look more enhanced and look more metallic-like if there's a slight bit of texture to the primer. So generally what I do when I'm applying the primer is I will do it in straight lines for the first part, like on the mane, the tail, etc. So I go with the hair as it were. Then on the body areas, I'm going to go ahead and swirl it. And you'll notice a little bit of the chestnut is showing. That's okay. If you have a lot of chestnut showing, you can go back after the first coat's dried and touch it up. 
We're only going to put one coat on because when you start putting the metallics on there, you start layering and you don't want to start losing detail to your primer. Okay, so once we have the entire model primed with the black flat paint, we're going to let it dry for at least 24 hours. If you try to apply the next coat before it's set for about 24 hours, you're just going to end up moving the black paint around. And then we'll pick up on the next step, which will be applying your first layer of metallic acrylic. First off, I'd like to go ahead and just show you a few examples of what you can do with this technique. So this is a plastic Heartland Regal Series Quarter Horse. He's been done with a dark bronze metallic finish. Then I have applied a blue patina over it. The patina reacts with the metal in the finish and you get this bluish black result. This is a Briar Cleveland Bay model. Again, it's plastic. In this case, I've applied a brass metallic over uh, paint to it. Then I've applied a blue patina, blue acid to it. And the results are, you can tell, quite a bit different from the bronze piece. The brass piece has got more gold tints to it. This is another briar. This silver model, I applied copper to it. You'll notice it looks quite a bit different from the previous briar. In this case, with this briar, I applied the acid and let it run down. So it gives you an effect of what you might see a statue in a park where rain has dripped down from it for many, many years. And so you can actually see the pattern that the rain has left as it's drizzled down. In the case of the silver, I've scrubbed in the acid and swirls. So this results in a patina that's more like what you would see on an old weather vane, which has been exposed to weather on all sides. And instead of the rain dripping down it, it tends to spatter around it. And so you get a different result for your patina. And lastly, this is a drastically customized stone Arabian. This one has been done um, not only in extreme customization, but I've also um, tweaked my methodology with my uh, paints. I've added more metal to the over uh, paint coat, so I get more of a, a color change. And you can see some areas I did not apply acid, so I've got a much brighter appearing uh, metal. You can see on the belly of this particular piece where the uh, patina has not, or the acid has not touched the bottom of the, the model. So again, you can actually see the, the faux metal showing through. So this just gives you an idea of the different ways that you can utilize this technique and achieve different results. The technique I'm going to show you today is a very basic one. It will involve simply putting um, a metallic overcoat onto a previously primed model, and then we'll start applying acid over the next couple of days, and I'll show you how to uh, increase your patina, how to buff the model, things like that. At the end of this video, I'll have a uh, list of sites where you can order the materials that I'm utilizing. Also, I'm going to be writing an article in Leslie Kathman's magazine, Equine Collectibles, which will be a companion piece to the video that you're watching now. So if you're a subscriber to Equine Collectibles, you'll get actual photos and a write-up on how to do the procedure. And if you're not a subscriber, I urge you to check out Equine Collectibles. It's a great magazine. It deals with the hobby, but it also deals with a lot of the artistic uh, side of things, uh, working with glass for equine sculptures, jewelry, um, plastic models, ceramics, etc. The next step is you're going to take your uh, primary overcoat with the metallic in it and start applying that. Now you've got several different choices. I'm going to do a basic copper 
overcoat today because I like the way the copper turns out. It's got a little bit more um, bling to it. it uh, when you add the acid to it, it really gives you a nice green patina. And also when the copper shows through, it gives you a nice metallic sheen to it. So the basic overcoat that I use is produced by Mako. And I'll give you the website and information at the end of this video. But this is a acrylic that's got metal filings already inside of it. They make several different colors. They make a dark bronze, they make a steel, they make a gold bronze, and then they make the copper. The, uh, the more advanced versions that I do of this technique, so for example, the stone model, I actually make up my own acrylics with uh, copper filings in it, so I get much more, uh, a lot more metal added to the model. But for uh, a very basic faux bronze, this stuff works beautifully. Okay, so I'm gonna shake it up well. I'm gonna get a new plate. And then I'm gonna put some of this onto the plate. It comes in a squeeze bottle, which is nice. And you wanna make sure that you don't get any of your patina acid in with your paint because that will oxidize the paint in the bottle and then it won't be worth anything. The other thing about using these uh, metallic acrylics is since they've got actual metal filings in there, you're going to have problems with your brushes wearing out very, very quickly. So I suggest if you do other types of customization, have a set of brushes strictly for the metallic faux bronze technique so that you're not wearing out your really good brushes. Okay, so depending on what um, sort of finish you want on this, you can apply your metallic overcoat in several different ways. I'm going to go ahead and do my first layer linear, linearly, and I'm just going to spread it down. And you'll notice the black showing through. That's okay. You're going to end up doing several coats of this. And between each coat, you're going to let it dry. And then on the last coat, you're going to want to keep it wet when you apply your acid to get your patina. And when you're doing the patina reaction, that reaction will keep going for sometimes a, a week. So if you get to the point where you really like what your model looks like, that's when you're going to want to apply your uh, Krylon matte primer or something like that. The models that I showed earlier, I did not put a primer on. I like that continued patina, so I don't actually uh, put an overcoat, a clear overcoat on my models. But if you get to the point where you really like where it is, go ahead and spray some Krylon matte on there, and it will kind of freeze it in time. Now, you'll notice that like I said, the black showing through, that's one of the reasons you want to use black because that's going to look more metallic if you do miss a spot in one of your coats. So when you spray this, the black obviously will not react with the acid, but it'll give it a dark appearance. If you use white or something like that, the white shows through and it just totally ruins the effect. The other thing is you want to try to make sure you get everything colored, but not applied real thickly. So in other words, I want to make sure I do cover the eyes with the metallic, but I don't want to cover them so thick that I start to lose detail. So I'm just applying a nice thin coat, my first coat. And if you don't apply it linear, linearly, that's fine. What you can do is you can kind of scrub it in, swirl it. That works well too. It will just change the appearance of the final bronze depending on how you apply your metallic overcoat.
So I've applied the first coat of the copper metallic over paint to the uh, Briar OF model that's been primed with black primer. You can see the black primer through the first coat. That's fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry and then we're going to apply a second coat and let that dry. Then when we come back tomorrow, we're going to put the third and final coat on and then we will apply the acid patina to the wet third coat. Now, as you apply each coat, what you're going to want to do is kind of close your eyes and run your fingers over the model. If you feel a bump, that's a clump of metal and just use your finger and just kind of chip away that bump. If you expose black, that's fine because you're going to cover it up. But unless you want your model to have a texture with that uh, bumpy metal, which is fine. Um, some of the ones I've done, I've allowed that texture to come through so it looks like very, very old corroded metal. You're going to want to remove all of those little bump areas. And as I say, my way of doing it is I shut my eyes so I'm more attuned to the tactile uh, sensation of where the bumps are on the model. And then I just take a nail and I just remove that bump. So now we are on the third day of preparing our faux bronze horse. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to put a third coat of the uh, overcoat that contains the metal pigments and then we're going to actually apply the acid and start the patina process. This is a simple custom so I'm just using the one type of metal. You can combine metals using different coats. You can do different areas and different colors so you could put you know a dark bronze in one area uh, the uh, <clears throat> brass color in another area, but we're just doing a basic faux bronze today. So we're just going to stick with the copper. So I'm going to put one more coat of the copper on there. I'm going to go ahead and put it on a clean plate. Pick up my brush. And we're just going to quickly swirl a wet coat onto the model. Because when you add the patina, you want the patina to be on wet paint. And I'm just using a scrubbing motion on this just to get coverage. And before I started applying the final coat of the copper overpaint, I ran my hands over the model just to check for any uh, little lumps from larger pieces of metal that might have been deposited in yesterday's paint. <clears throat> and you can just use your fingernail to remove that and then just put more paint over the little divot that the uh, piece of metal would have left. What I've done to prepare for applying the acid is I've taken a uh, what I call a puppy piddle pad and it's simply a uh, pad that's got some plastic backing so that the acid gets absorbed into the pad instead of uh, running onto your tabletop. And just to be uh, cautious, I'm going to go ahead and put on my safety glasses and a pair of gloves. The particular procedure I'm showing you uses very dilute acid. The uh, more involved procedure that I use involves a more concentrated acid. So you don't necessarily have to wear gloves, but if you've got sensitive skin or a cut, something like that, you're going to want to put some sort of protection on. Okay, and you can also obviously put on an apron if you want to. Okay, there's different ways that you can apply the uh, acid. You can spray it. 
And if you're going to spray it, I recommend using some sort of a spray booth type thing, even if it's just uh, some pieces of uh, poster board put together. That way it's not getting sprayed all over. And also make sure you're wearing a little respirator mask if uh, you've got asthma or something of that nature and keep pets and children away. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and apply the first layer of patina using an eyedropper. So I'm taking the acid and I'm just going to drop and let it drip down the model. So this is going to mimic what rain would do, somewhat acidic rain on a statue in a park or a city square. And I'm going to add enough that it runs down the legs. I'm going to come back up here and let it run down the nose. You can see it's dribbling off of the statue onto the puppy piddle pad. And I'm going to put the lid back on my acid. And we're going to pause and let it react. The reaction between the, the acid and the uh, latex containing metallics is going to take a little while and it actually will proceed for several days. So we're going to come back in a little bit and take a look at what we've got going so far and then I'll show you how to sponge it on and then do a little bit of the spray on technique. Okay, so we've waited about 30 minutes and you can see we're starting to get some patina. And you can see the patina has dribbled down where I applied the acid. Well, I want to get a little more patina than what the dribbling does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my acid and I put a little spray adapter on it. And I'm going to carefully spray it. Normally I would do this in a uh, fume box, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate it for you. The other thing is normally I would have my uh, respirator on and my goggles on. These are some glasses I like because they snap apart and I can just leave them hanging around my neck so I always know where they are. So I'm going to leave those on so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, so I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm going to go ahead and spray the belly first because I want to get some of the inside leg and the inside of the tail. And I'm just gently misting some of the acid and you can definitely smell it. So like I said, if you've got respiratory conditions or pets around, you definitely want to do this in a well-ventilated area. Okay. And then I'm going to come around here and spray this side. And again, we're going to wait for about 30 minutes and see how much patina develops. The patina will continue to develop over the next few days. And so if you reach a point where you really like what you've got, your next step will be to take a rubbing cloth. Once this is perfectly dry, you'll just take a, roughing, a rubbing cloth and just buff it. And that, the more you buff it, the more sheen you'll have on your patina. Then the last step you can use is just use the oils on your hand and rub the model with your hand as well. Then if you really want to seal it, you can put some Krylon matte sealant on it. So we're going to let this guy, I call it um, marinating. I'm going to let it marinate in the acid for about 30 more minutes and then we'll come back and take a look at what we've got. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes. The acid is still a little bit wet, but I'm going to go ahead and rotate them so you can kind of see how spraying the acid made a larger area of patina, especially on the neck and on the main area. Now, if you want to, you can take a brush, you can take the wet acid and sort of pull the acid down so that you can make it look more like rain water has run down the model's face and neck. You can also apply the acid using a sponge and then you can just dab it and that will give you a little bit more of a stippling type texture with your acid. So we're going to let this marinate in the acid overnight. 
Then tomorrow will be the last day for the video and I'll show you how to finalize uh, by buffing it and then I'm not actually going to apply Krylon to this particular model but we'll discuss how to apply it and when to apply it and how to finish up your model so that it's ready to go into the show ring. So we've left the model to marinate in the acid overnight and you can see we've got a really nice looking patina going here. If you wanted more metal showing through, you could go back and reapply the metal overcoat. If you wanted more patina, you could go ahead and apply more acid. I like the way he's turned out so far, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to the next step, which is I'm going to take a polishing rag and I'm just going to rub him and polish him. Just to give it a little bit of a sheen, not a lot, but just a little bit. And your hands work just as well. You know, just obviously make sure you're not wearing any jewelry as you rub. But, you know, you can just rub the finish. At this point, the acid is neutralized, so you don't have to worry about getting acid on your skin. And it's hard to tell on the video, but now I've got a slightly satin sheen instead of a matte sheen. If you really like the matte, you don't even have to rub it. Um, I would advise taking a little paper towel over it because sometimes the patina will uh, rub off a little bit and you don't want that sitting on there while you're working on the model or showing the model. So we have a finished product here. We have our faux bronze plastic horse. At the conclusion of the video, I'll give you some websites that you can go to to order the materials for doing the patina. I will also give you my email address, so if you have any questions, you can follow up with me, as well as there will be a uh, article, a companion article with photographs of each step in Leslie Katzman's Equine Collectibles magazine, which will be coming out most probably in late winter of 2017 or early spring of 2018. Thank you for watching, and I'll have more videos eventually on ceramics.